This video is going to look at the electric vehicles of India, the world's most populous country. But their automotive market is different. I did an overview video of that, so you can check it out. Now, this is going to sound negative, but the electric vehicles in India are probably 10 years behind the rest of the world, but they're evolving three times as quick to catch up. So let's take a look at the electric vehicles of India. I'm going to start this video looking at the first generation of electric vehicles currently on the road in India. And to be clear, these are four-wheel cars, electric vehicles, because India has a lot of three-wheel vehicles and even more two-wheel motorcycles and scooters, all of which are transitioning to electric. Before we look at EVs, I think it's important to understand the charging system in India. And this is where we may have fucked up in North America. Our standard outlet at home is 120 volts. For most devices, that's fine. In India and in many other markets, a standard outlet operates at roughly double that voltage. Volts times amps equals watts. So a 15 amp circuit, which is pretty common in India, it can charge an EV twice as fast as a level one charger in the US. 3.3 kilowatts is okay for most EVs in India, that's because they don't commute as far as cars in America. If you want more power, a 7.2 kilowatt level two charger can be installed on a higher amperage circuit. These are often called fast chargers. They're AC level two, but they're being marketed as fast. If you want to go further in a car, India is investing in a public EV charging network. There are many charging networks being built out by various companies. For the most part, India's cars use the CCS2 connector. For the DC fast chargers currently available in the market, 50 kilowatts is pretty typical, so not really fast compared to other markets. Those serve the current generation of EVs on the road well, and it's not a given that they will get higher power chargers anytime soon. That's because India's booming economy has put tremendous strain on their electrical grid. Air conditioning is not common in their homes, it's a luxury, but given the tremendous heat, people are willing to spend their increased wages on it. High-tech data centers consume a lot of energy, as does growth in manufacturing. Renewable energy is rapidly growing, but so is demand, and thus we come to a common problem. Coal. India and China both burn a lot of it to feed their growth. Both are increasing renewable energy to replace it, but spikes in demand are still being met with fossil fuels. An EV powered by fossil fuels for electricity does reduce greenhouse gases over its lifetime, even when you factor in the manufacturing of the battery. But the reduction is less. To get the game-changing benefits we need to address climate change, more renewable electricity is needed and upgrades to the electrical infrastructure. Now for the good part. Let's roll through some of the most popular EVs currently on the road, and I think you'll see why a DC 50 kilowatt charger is sufficient. Maruti Suzuki is the market leader in India for all cars, but they currently do not have an EV. We'll talk about their plans later. Tata moved fast to try and disrupt the market leader. They have the Tiago, Tigor, Nexon, and now the Punch. All are what I would consider first-generation EVs. That's because they're based on a combustion engine vehicle platform, converted into an electric. When automakers do that, there are inevitable compromises in the packaging and the performance. We had EVs like this in the US, the Volkswagen e-Golf, Ford Focus EV, Toyota RAV4 EV, but I'm gonna compare them to the Hyundai Kona EV before its recent refresh. That vehicle, too, was an ICE platform that also offered an electric version. The Tata Nexon EV competes with the homegrown Mahindra XUV400 and the MG ZS EV, a proud British motor car company. No, no they're, they're just a brand name owned by Chinese state-owned SAIC. All of these vehicles are combustion engine platforms that have been made into an EV. Some similarities start to jump out when you look at their specs. They're not powerful or fast, but oddly enough, neither are the combustion engine versions that they're based on. 
they move fast enough to be useful, so the electric versions don't offer ludicrous acceleration, but the market doesn't expect them to, and they actually appreciate the peppiness of the EV. Their batteries are relatively small, and thus range is limited. <sighs> and India has their own rating system for EV range, certified by the Automotive Research Association of India. And yeah, the results are generous. Here's a couple of examples for the same EV in India and in other markets, quoting WLTP and EPA numbers. Expect much lower range than the manufacturer's estimates, particularly when you're running the AC at full blast. It can be hard to package a large battery in a platform that was designed to be a combustion engine vehicle, with a fuel tank and an engine. On the positive side, that keeps cost and weight down with a smaller VAT battery. So it's practical. And charging is not DC fast. As I mentioned before, you currently don't see ultra-powerful EV chargers like you do in China or in Europe or now in North America. 50 kilowatts is boring, but it's kind of sufficient right now. All this makes for a very functional EV that suits the needs of many drivers in India. The price, though, is more than the standard gas model. India does have FAME. FAME stands for Faster Adoption and Manufacturing of Electric Vehicles. This is their second edition of subsidies. By the way, gas prices in India are not all that expensive compared to other nations. At just under five US dollars per gallon, that sounds expensive to us, but globally, that's a pretty good price. One of the most affordable EVs is the MG Comet, a small city car. You see these offered in China, like the QQ Ice Cream or the Hongwang Mini EV. They're meant to be very cute with funky colors and cartoonish or video game graphics. Let's be serious for a moment. India is home to some of the world's best engineers and developers. Surely they can do better than this. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. Coming soon will be new electric vehicles based on their next generation platforms. Let's see how they compare. The most highly anticipated electric vehicle in India this year is not a Tesla. It's the Maruti Suzuki EVX, the first EV from the market leader for combustion engine vehicles. What you see here is just a concept. We don't have too many specs, but it is a dedicated EV platform. The production version is expected to launch before the end of 2024. It will be produced in India, so expect that prices are competitive. The batteries will be manufactured in India by a joint venture between Toshiba, Denso, and Suzuki. The batteries are a Toshiba design that they call SCIB, and it is different from other lithium-ion batteries. They use a lithium-titanium oxide chemistry, or LTO. Now, this type of battery has been used in some hybrid vehicles before, but we'll have to wait to learn more about the details. These are not game-changing batteries, but they are a potential alternative to LFP. Tata, the current EV market leader, has a next-generation platform called Active. Specs will make them competitive with cars outside of India, but not setting any records for charging, range, or performance. The new Tata Punch EV uses the active platform today, but it does so in a body that is converted from a combustion engine vehicle. So some are calling it a Gen 1.5 EV, and I think that makes sense too. Tata has also a concept SUV called the Sierra EV. Exterior styling looks nice. The, the thick B-pillar to me is just a styling gimmick. I don't see what the purpose of it is. Rear seat roominess is an important aspect for vehicles in the India market. They're just not a commuter car for one person. They need to actually haul people around. Ground clearance and suspension travel are also important as unpaved roads are sometimes encountered. Now, this is only a concept, but the production EV is expected in late 2025. Not to be outdone, Mahindra has also shown multiple concepts for its next-generation EV platform, also expected sometime in 2025. They recently announced an agreement with Volkswagen to use some of their EV components on their next-gen platform. Again, 
more impressive specs than their EVs today, but nothing out of this world. Their concepts, though, are futuristic, and I think they look pretty cool. I particularly like the Rally concept, an off-road performance version of the BE concept. Thar E is a little more out there, not as close to production ready just based on the looks. It is the electric version of, oh yeah, you remember that story about Jeep licensing the CJ and then the Wrangler design to manufacture in India? This is it, the Mahindra Thar. Mahindra and Jeep went to court over the Roxor, which is an ATV being sold in the US, and Mahindra won that battle. So as long as it is only titled as an off-road vehicle, not street legal, Mahindra can sell that here, and they want to make an EV version of the Thar for India. Other automakers with a presence in India are selling their EVs too. Citroen offers the EC3. It's made in India, and they plan to export it to other Southeast Asia markets. That's exactly what the Indian government wants, not just for domestic consumption, but also for export. Volkswagen will soon offer the ID4 in India. I believe that will be imported from outside. Kia offers the EV6. And I showed you specs earlier for the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Kona Electric. Both are offered in that market. Then there are the luxury brands where price doesn't matter, but none of these are going to be high volume sellers. You have BMW, Mercedes Benz, Audi, and even Volvo is giving the market a try. In my earlier video on India, I summarized the many import duties and policies intended to protect the Indian automotive market. If you want to sell a lot of cars, you need to manufacture in the country. BYD made an offer to invest in India manufacturing, and it was rejected by the government. India and China don't really like each other. Tesla has been strongly rumored to enter the market, but apparently it won't be with the smaller Model 2, according to reputable reports. So it's BYD versus Tesla in India. And who do I think would win? Hyundai Kia. They already manufacture in India. Their cars, the combustion engine ones, sell really well, and they're starting to sell some EVs also. The Indian government would be much more likely to accept an offer for manufacturing by a South Korean company than a Chinese company. Kia has the EV5, which is a little big for the Indian market, but it looks really good and I think it would be desirable. And the Kia EV3, that's probably a better size vehicle. If they were to manufacture that in country, it could be a very affordable EV option and a premium one at that. That's probably a good place to end this video for now. I'll be keeping my eye out for any new developments from the Indian electric vehicle market. So tap that like and subscribe button and thank you for watching. Damn it, who typed a question mark on the teleprompter? For the last time, anything you put on that prompter, Burgundy will read.